All right. Okay, so the big news is that on Business Insider's list of the world's sexiest CEOs, <laughs> you were number four. Yeah, so my question is, why wasn't I number one, <laughs> and how do I get there? So you have to ask Elon Musk. Oh, yeah, he's, I can understand that. He's been busy. Yeah, Elon He's done quite is, a lot. Elon's a big deal. Um, he's, you, you guys are both part of what's called the PayPal Mafia, though, right? That's right. Uh, and in fact, Elon kind of gave me my start in Silicon Valley. Um, little known history. So I, was at, I joined X.com, which was his little company that merged with this other one called Confinity that together kind of created the, the PayPal service. So uh, when I met him, I was very much blown away. He you know, was painting this picture of how X.com, this tiny little online bank, was going to take down Visa and MasterCard over the next few years. I was like, all right, sign me up. That sounds like a good plan. So Elon was Elon even back then. Oh, yeah. Always thinking big. Um, let's talk about Yelp, though. Sure. OK. So um, not everyone is so familiar with Yelp in Europe as they are in the US. 100, mil <clears throat> 100 million users, but, but not quite so big in Europe. Tell, tell us about Yelp. What is Yelp? Yeah, so we started in the summer of 2004. And I was between first and second year of business school. I was attending Harvard Business School. And I joined this little incubator for my summer internship uh, that was put together by Max Levchin, who is here somewhere, <laughs> roaming the halls. And um, you know, the, the little incubator, the idea was, hey, let's come up with the next great consumer internet idea. That's what we were focused on. And um, you know, we took note that Craigslist was affecting the, the media, especially the local newspapers. And so taking something that was, you know, traditional paper-bound business and turning it into something very powerful online. And we looked around to see what other businesses, you know, similarly could be affected. And, uh, you know, it was sitting there right in front of my face because I had it underneath my monitor propping it up, which was the Yellow Pages. And it ah. felt like that business, you know, was, was ripe for disruption in 2004. And so we set about brainstorming, trying to figure out what could be better than the Yellow Pages. You had this new medium, the internet. Uh, it was kind of the web 2.0 time, and so there were some new ideas around, you know, Friendster had, had launched at that point, Flickr had launched, the, this idea of connecting with friends was, was an important one. And then there was also the idea of consumer reviews. And you had that, you know, primarily in products, uh, you had ePinions as a precursor, you had Amazon doing, collecting uh, reviews of, of products. And so the idea of connecting socially and adding a, a layer of consumer reviews seemed like it was, it was interesting, that there was something promising there. And so we actually, the, we, we found ourselves thinking about, well, what if you could essentially ask your friends for recommendations? Wouldn't that build up all this incredible word of mouth knowledge and allow you to search over it and become the most powerful way to find a local business? It'd be like the Yellow Pages, but instead of being entirely pay to play, it would be driven by consumer sentiment, what people thought about the local business. You could actually have reputation. And so we got excited about that and built a site and launched it. And the initial concept didn't quite work. Um, you know, it was about asking friends for recommendations and people felt like, well, I could just email my friends, that's easier. But buried in there was just a way to write and publish your own review, much like a blog, uh, but with, with more structure. And w what I noticed is that you know, five, when, when people would sit down and write a review, they'd write 5, 10, 15 reviews in one sitting. So there was something exciting and, and addictive about sharing your opinion online, publishing it. And so with that just little spark, uh, we refocused the site. And by February 2005, we had essentially relaunched it. And that's when it started to work. Like just in San Francisco at first, people started writing all these local reviews. Um, and then it became quite popular there. We took funding and expanded other cities. And um, now 100 million, 100 million people worldwide, and you have expanded into Europe. I mean, so what's, mm -hmm. you bought Quipe and then have integrated it? Yeah, our international expansion began in 2008, and it's, you know, Yelp has taken years to build up. Um, you know, we're entering our, our 10th year, and so we've only been in, in Europe, you know, our first foray was, pro foray was probably 2009. Um, and we've been launching countries uh, ever since. And now, you know, we actually do have significant traffic here in Europe. Um, we're now north of 13 mil million uniques. That was a Q3 last year number. Um, and we bought our top competitor in Europe, 
uh, Quipe, and uh, that was late 2012. And we spent 2013 in incorporating the content and bringing over the traffic. Um, and so it's, it's been very successful. Um, the, the growth that we've seen in Europe uh, as of Q3 again last, last year was uh, you know, over 100%, it was about 110%. And that's not counting subsequent growth that came from bringing over the quite content in Germany, which was their biggest market. So what were the challenges, I mean, of, of moving over overseas? It's, 2009 was a while ago, and, and it's starting mm -hmm. to get momentum now, but it, it's taken a little bit. What's, what were? You know, it, we, we continue to, to use the same old Yelp playbook, uh, and it works. But the thing is, it, it does take time. Uh, we've never been an overnight success. And so it takes real investment uh, you know, to, to build up content, to build a, a real living, breathing community. And that's the thing that is, is most unique about Yelp. I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about the competitive landscape. But in every city that we launch, we have at least one community manager. And that person is both a model user on the site, but then also connects with the people that uh, end up joining and participating in that particular city and brings them together offline. And so it, it's truly organic. It's like this living, breathing thing that you can't just flip a switch and have it suddenly, you know, you, you, you can't create a community just overnight. Like, imagine if you were, you know, starting a new church <laughs> and you were a pastor or, or, or a priest or something <laughs> and, and you, wanted, you wanted to bring people together. Like, you can't one day say, okay, I've got it. And like, suddenly everyone's a community and they like each other and they're, you know, doing the same things and participating. Um, you know, you actually have to do it person by person. How, how, is, how is growth, I mean, how is the market different? What are the non-obvious differences between the, the U.S. and the European market? Um, I mean, I think there, there is, you know, cultural stuff like lear learning how to communicate what we're doing um, in the U.S. with community management and how do you build and grow that community. Uh, we've had to, to tailor that and make sure that, that we've, you know, figured out how to communicate that um, correctly. I think also coming to Europe is a bit different than uh, just building out the U.S. Because the U.S. you're building on this incredible momentum of, hey, we've got San Francisco and we've got New York. And, and so the, the cities start to cross-pollinate and, and, and you, know, you, you start gaining users in places without even making an effort. But when we were starting in Europe, we're literally starting from scratch. I mean, obviously there's some tourist traffic going back and forth, so that brings some reviews, but it's not necessarily you know, what, you're try what we're trying to accomplish, which is make Yelp really matter to people in that city. So if you're here in Munich, there's a community of people that contribute to the site in Munich, and people who live here are like, oh yes, I can come to Yelp and find great recommendations. Like, we're not trying to be just a travel site where it's just tourists passing through and, and giving their two cents about stuff. So Yelp founded 2004, right? You know, that's, that's the desktop web. Um, it's been a big transition to mobile. Um, I, th I think that there's now more people using mobile for more time than they are on the desktop. How has that transition been for Yelp? And have you sort of, do you feel like you've successfully bridged that gap? I mean, have you, have you leapt over the chasm? I think so. Um, you know, we were early on the mobile wave, uh, actually very early. If you really want to go back and look at it, we launched our first mobile site in 2006, uh, which was a, a WAP site for uh, you know, the feature phone, so you could go on your, mobile, your uh, Motorola Razor and pull up Yelp and type a search. But of course, mobile didn't really start happening until the launch of the iPhone in 2007, and then subsequently the App Store in 2008. And uh, you know, we made the early decision to bet big on uh, especially iPhone and, and build an app, and it was well received, and Apple got behind it and helped promote it. Um, and that gave, gave us a leg up. And you know, what went from a, a fun and interesting side project of like, hey, this, this mobile thing could be big, is now actually about half of our business. Um, so like, you know, 46% of our ads are actually shown uh, to mobile users. And so it's literally like our, our business almost seemingly overnight. I mean, obviously, like, there's the app part, but there's also the mobile web part. And it's just gotten so enormous. Um, you know, from, from both a revenue standpoint and from a traffic standpoint. Now, you only added, we were talking before, you only added the ability to write reviews on mobile this past summer. Mm -hmm. Is that because people don't, I mean, is there a different kind of way that people use mobile that you didn't really need to worry about that so fast? Yeah, I mean, we, we did create ways to contribute uh, 
outside of reviewing, obviously you could contribute photos, which became extremely popular because it's so much easier to contribute photos from your phone than it is to take pictures on a camera and load them later. Um, we also had kind of a short, uh, what we called tip, um, that you could add, that, that you could add um, and that's been there for years. We wanted to be careful about reviewing because, again, we're, we're this community-based site, and the people in the community really pride themselves on their writing. Um, and so we felt like if we went too quickly and we just threw something out there, like a lot of the you know, other folks uh, in the competitive landscape did, the quality would just not be up to par. Like people you know, might start contributing that this place is great, this place stinks. And fundamentally that's not what Yelp is about. When you come to Yelp, like you get all this rich information about local businesses. You know, people literally are telling stories, they're talking about all the different things that happened. Um, and there's so much texture to that uh, that we didn't want to lose. And so we spent a lot of time learning about mobile and mobile contributions and, and actually experimenting with our, the feature we did have, tips. And then once we felt comfortable with the medium and we also felt like users were comfortable with their phones and, and able to type long form content, then we finally got to that feature. And you know, it's been designed very carefully to put an emphasis on quality over quantity. So there's a uh, Mexican restaurant in my neighborhood in New York that my wife and I go to too many times a week. And they sent uh, me an email, and it said, if you uh, write a review for us on Yelp, we'll give you a $25 gift certificate. Um, it, it, Yelp can make or break businesses. Is, is that OK that my favorite Mexican restaurant did that? Or would they get in trouble? Um, how, how do you police? Police it so that the reviews on Yelp are, are honest and not just, yeah. you know, bought. There's a lot of stuff that we do, and I would like you to send me that offer so that we can get on top of that. I will not. <laughs> um, but we actually do get reports uh, on businesses from, from the community, from consumers. Uh, hey, this business is trying to buy reviews or is, you know, making an offer. That, that's certainly against uh, what we're all about. We're about unbiased content. Um, and so there's a, a number of ways that we, we attack that problem. The first is we have a recommendation algorithm. And so what that does is looks at all sorts of signals. You know, we're gathering data, how people are using the site, and so forth. And we're able to make a determination of, hey, is this review likely to be reliable? Or are we not sure? We just don't know enough about it. Or are we actually quite sure that it's completely fake? Um, and so for the two that are where we're either uncertain or completely certain it's you know, biased content, we stick it into a separate section called not recommended. And so the reviews that consumers are seeing, it's now 117 million people monthly, are the recommended reviews. And then there's a separate section, which you can get to. It's very easy. It's just at the bottom. It's a link. But that's content that we're either less sure about or is you know, outright um, spam or unreliable content. And so that's, that's kind of the primary way that, that we attack it. But we also do something that's pretty unique. I think we're the only ones uh, out there doing this. And, and part of it is a testament to how powerful Yelp has become, particularly in the US, is you know, more and more businesses will try and game Yelp by offering compensation for reviews. And you know, most frequently, this happens uh, you know, on something like Craigslist or you know, a similar site where you can post and make offers to people and say, hey, I'm looking for someone to write a review for me, and I'll pay you money. And so we actually have a team that their job is just to run sting operations. And so they pose as users interested in selling their reviews. And then uh, you know, when we get the evidence, uh, which we often do, uh, we then post a consumer alert on their business page that lasts for three months and shows the evidence. So it can warn all the consumers that, hey, this business owner was acting in a shady manner and was trying to mislead you. You might want to patronize another business. So is it true that uh, Steve Jobs once convinced you not to sell your company to Google or had a hand in it? Uh, I wouldn't say that he convinced me, but he did uh, call to register his uh, uh, strong concern that I might be contemplating uh, selling to Google. And uh, you know, it, was, it was a pretty how, surreal how, moment How does Steve in my Jobs career. register his strong concern? Uh, very passionately. <laughs> and repeating the same message again and again. You know, it's a, you've got a great company there. There's no reason why you should sell. You know, if it's a money problem, you should talk to me. I have money. 
<laughs> and you're like and, his nephew. And and he's like, like you know, Google already has enough power. You know, like it's it's much better if you stay independent and so forth. You know, and he just kind of went on and on. And I, and, I, and I couldn't, of course, resist my desire to just be a fanboy and be like, I love your product so much. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so last question is is. Um, You've been doing this 10 years now. You know, you were a 26-year-old entrepreneur. You were one of these, like, young kids in the scene. And then, and now it's 10 years later. Yelp is public. It's up five times since it went public. Are you going to do this for another 10 years? Is this, is this, is this your biggest ambition for forever now? I do not see the light at the end of the tunnel just yet. <laughs> so I see myself in this for a, a very long time. I mean, when you start a company and it you know, gets to this point, your identity is so wrapped up in it, it's hard to imagine life for me without Yelp. Um, and I enjoy my job every day. I, I have an incredible team. You know, most of the, the people that, that I work with directly have been at the company for several years. And that's just very gratifying to have you know, people that you can be close with and, and that are your partners in the business. Well, Jeremy, thanks so much, and thank you, everyone. Thanks.